Welcome to another exciting lecture on pumps and pumping. Again, uh, this this will be shorter than uh, lecture two. This is lecture three, and we're talking about impeller types. Okay, so uh, there is some useful information in this, and you'll be kind of accountable for that when it gets to the quiz portion of the module. So make sure you're kind of taking some mental notes as we go through it. Again, this is this should be uh, a pretty short little um, video on. Uh, impellers and impeller types. Okay, so let's first talk about the impeller. Hopefully by now everyone knows what the impeller is. If not, please go and review module one. Right, the impeller sits in the volute, and this we're primarily looking at uh, our end suction type pumps. Though um, we have similar type uh, impeller components in the other types of centrifugal pumps, though they may look slightly different. All right, so let's talk about the components real quick. And we have the eye, which hopefully by now everyone knows the eye is this part, right? The central component, which is how the centrifugal force actually is operates the pump and moves water. So it's a very important part of that. Then you have the shroud and the vein. Okay, now the shroud on this is really easy to see. Uh, that's kind of the plates that cover the front or the back or both. Um, typically, you'll always at least have a shroud in the back. In the case of one type of impeller, we cover uh, both the front and the back, okay? So what things sit on, uh, the, these plates on the front and the back are going to be the shroud, and then you can think of that like a covering, and then we have the vein, and the vein's kind of hard to see on this, so I'm going to scoot kind of ahead here. Oh, here we go. This is good. Uh, here we have the shroud. Again, the shroud is what the veins sit on. These fins right here, these metal fins, are going to be your vein, okay? So make sure you have that uh, vernacular down so you understand what these pieces are, okay? Okay, so three basic types of impellers. When we're talking about uh, water, wastewater, we have open impellers, we have semi-open impellers, and then we have closed impellers. And each of these are pretty easy to remember uh, because it all kind of bases on how much shroud is available. So you can kind of figure from that that open is going to have the least amount of shroud and closed is going to have the most amount of shroud. And that does affect things in particular when we start talking about efficiency or when we're talking about efficiency of pumps, the, the more covered that your veins are, the higher efficiency that I have because I have less recirculating water within my pump. And that's kind of confusing, but we'll discuss that in lab on why that is when I can show you on a more specific uh, a more specific model. Okay, so open impeller. This is we've already seen this now. Um, the open impeller is pretty easy to identify. There are essentially no shrouds and that's that's kind of wrong because this in the back is essentially a shroud, but there's very minimalistic shroud your open impeller. We're talking about low efficiency because re think about this for a second. I guess I'll talk about this and maybe I'll hit it again in lab. But the idea is as I'm throwing the water, I remember I'm moving from an area of low pressure to high pressure or high pressure, low pressure. So think about that for a second. Which one is it? All right. So I'm going to create suction here right and I'm almost always going to move from areas of high pressure low pressure so I'm going to create low pressure here at the eye right which is what draws the water in high pressure out on the the edges of these uh, of these veins right as my volute get bigger so remember there's a big play between velocity and pressure okay so the idea is here high pressure here on the edge low pressure here if this whole thing is open and I have water coming out here in the high pressure zone, there's good chance for that water to make itself back down into the low pressure and then I'm repumping the same water. So you might be asking why in the world would I ever use one of these and there's, there's maybe you can already think there's reasons why I would do that. Um, I can move high volumes at low pressure. I'm lo not looking at big pressure differences and I can move large solids. And this is the real reason um, I think that we primarily tend to use these open impellers is because if I have large solids, they will fit through these veins and through this open shroud system, right? And I'm really only limited 
by the size of the eye and the spacing between, uh, between these veins. Okay, So keep that in mind as you're looking at these. Okay, Semi-open impeller, right? You now see that we have a full back shroud here in the back. Covers that entirely. It's not a circle, so in case you missed that, right? this has been cut along the veins. Here we have the complete circle. Okay, and you can see that this should be operating in a certain direction. Why don't you ask yourself right now, should this thing in its orientation in the picture be operating clockwise or counterclockwise? Which way should this be spinning? And remember, we're not going to cup the water but throw the water. Right? In this case, it should be operating clockwise. Keep that in mind. Okay, back shroud only. This handles medium-sized solids because we have some limitation here with the shroud. Uh, we, this is typical in raw water systems, sewage pumps, recirculation on deep wells, some line shaft turbines, things like that. Okay, So that's going to be your semi-open impeller. And the last is your closed impeller. right? And here you can see we have both a front and a back shroud. Well, you can't see it so well, but the back shroud is here. It covers the entire thing and then the front shroud here on top. So if I take this semi-open impeller and I put a shroud over the top of this, I put a cover on it, I get this. So the veins are essentially going to look the same inside of your closed impeller. Okay, And you're going to have those shrouds. However, you'll notice there's going to be some limitation on solids. right? The spacing here is we're going to have a critical spacing here, which basically decides how much solids is going to be allowed through these things. And typically, we're looking at very clear water, irrigation water, and even more specific, you know, I'm going to maybe even want screened water at the bottom if I have even any sand, because these things are very, very efficient. However, very small passage of, of solids through them. Okay, high pressure, low volume. High pressure, low volume. Remember, though, pressure is good. We move water efficiently with pressure. Okay, so again, there is your closed impeller. So make sure you know what that looks like and know that it's the most efficient and that it cannot handle many solids. Okay, so back to this critical distance, right? So here we're looking at the same fully enclosed impeller, your closed impeller. The critical distance here is across the spacing. So if I look back, Okay, if I look back on this image, the critical spacing would be here, the distance between these two shrouds. And that's going to limit the size of solids. And these can be very, very small. But remember, the efficiency here comes with that my water stays entrained between the shrouds until I exit it. So there's much less tolerance to lose um, water back to the low pressure at the eye. Okay, and typically the spacing between the shroud, uh, the shrouds, and the impeller and the volute is sometimes within thousands, uh, thousands of an inch. So we're talking about something that's very, very, very high tolerance, and it, it's it's set to not really allow very much passage of water from the high pressure zone in your volute down to the low pressure. Okay, so there's your critical distance on that. And then we have propellers, and a propeller is exactly what it, you think it would look like. It looks like a propeller. Let me see if I can get laser pointer. I haven't ever tried that before. Oh, screen draw. Let me try this. Okay, so I don't even know if I have a picture on this, but let me just draw what a propeller would look like. Yeah, it's not too bad. Okay, we're going to have the shaft like that, and then we're going to have basically these fins like that. Hey, that's not terrible. What's scary is I don't know what's behind this, so when I click through, there might be something there that I need. Right, so this is pretty good for moving certain things. Um, it has a very specific type of uh, axial flow, right? Flow is going to run like this, which is very different than the flow that I'm going to get on my typical impeller. So if I draw an impeller like this, I'm just you know, I'm getting really good at this. Uh, well, I was doing well um, with the drawing tool here. So if I draw my impeller like this, um, I'm going to get what we call, this is axial, this is radial flow. So water, remember, comes in 
to this. So if I could draw a line, an arrow coming directly into the eye, and then traveling out, kind of perpendicular to the eye, that's going to give me the radial flow. And then often I have, getting into flow types here, but it's good to probably know this because the propeller is all, all going to be this axial flow. Then I have mixed flow, which I get often with these fully enclosed impellers where flow is going to come in this way and then around and out, and that's going to be mixed flow. So a little complicated there. Um, we'll talk about that more. I'm going to see if I can erase this on here. I'm not seeing it. Okay, bear with me just a second. I can figure out how to erase this thing. Uh, oh, there we go. Got it away. Okay, good. Okay, so propellers are different. So propeller looks like a propeller, the same thing you'd see on an outboard motor or on an airplane. It's its own class, though we do use it in water movement. Um, similar to a boat, except the propeller remains stationary. They don't move up and down. Season trash pumps, raw water intakes, because the the size of solids that can be ran through that is kind of limitless except for the size of the pipe that it's running through obviously if it's too big um, you're gonna get stuck so well I should say it'd be the radius of the pipe that you're putting in it um, when you think about that okay so those are your propellers so we've got impellers and then we have propellers in the industry we call them props but that gives you at least the basic idea of the different types of impellers. So just a recap here real quick. Three types. You've got your open impeller, essentially no shroud, a little bit of a back, back shroud here. And we're talking about low efficiency, high volume, low pressure. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my next one. Semi-open. We can handle still a fair amount of solids through this. I'm not going to have highs efficiency as I get with a fully enclosed impeller but I can get better efficiency than I can with an open impeller. Okay, and I have the back shroud complete. If I stick a shroud on top, I've got the closed impeller, high efficiency, low tolerances for solids, and low tolerance for spacing between the impeller and the volute, but because of that, I'm very, very efficient. And then you also have our propeller, um, which looks kind of like the airplane propeller or your boat propeller, however you want to think of it. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful, and uh, thanks for your patience with me as I went through this, and if you've got questions, please let me know.